In this problem, we have a U-shaped wire and a movable metal crossbar that's going to be allowed to fall along this U-shaped wire. And there's going to be a current that gets induced in the bar. There's going to be a force that acts on it due to that current. And so we're going to be going through and looking at things like the magnetic flux, how quickly the flux is changing. So we're going to look at Faraday's law to calculate the induced EMF. We're going to look at the force on the bar based on the current that's flowing in it. We're going to look at how the force changes with the velocity. So we're going to be looking at a relationship between the acceleration and the velocity. We're going to write a differential equation. And finally, we're going to look at the terminal speed of the bar. So in this problem, we have a magnetic field B0 that's pointing it says, in the direction shown in the figure above, if you look at the figure, the magnetic field is shown by X's, which represent vectors going into the page. Dots would show the tips of arrows coming out towards you. X's show the tails of arrows going into the page. So we have a magnetic field that's into the page, and we have this bar that's initially at the position H0. It's at a height H sub 0. And the first thing that we're asked is find the magnitude of the magnetic flux through the loop when the crossbar is in that position at the height h0. So magnetic flux is magnetic field times area. Again, it's the integral of b with respect to dA. So it's the integral of b dA. But if it's a uniform magnetic field, that's just the magnetic field times the area. And so that loop, again, we're looking at the, the closed loop. The loop is H0 times L. That's the area of it. So the magnetic flux, when it's in this position, is going to be the magnetic field B0 times the area, which is L times H0. Now we're told that the crossbar is released from rest and it slides with negligible friction down the U-shaped wire without breaking electrical contact. So it stays in contact with the U-shaped wire. It says, on the figure below, indicate the direction of the current in the crossbar as it falls. So if I go back to the original diagram, there's a couple of ways of looking at this. One of the ways of looking at it is to know that inside this conducting bar, you have positive and negative charges. And if we're looking at the direction of current, we're looking at what direction positive charges would go. And so if we have these positive charges that are moving down, so their velocity is downwards, the magnetic force on those charges is given by QV cross B. So I use the right-hand rule to find the direction of the force on positive charges. So I start by pointing the fingers of my right hand down in the direction of the velocity. I bend my fingers into the board to point in the direction of the magnetic field. And my thumb points in the direction of the force on those charged particles, which is to the right. And this is saying that these positive charges would get pushed to the right, which means that that current through that bar is flowing to the right. There's another way of looking at this, but that would be a complete justification for this. So it's going to ask to justify the answer. That's the justification. A different way of justifying it is to look at this in terms of Lenz's law. The magnetic flux in general is B0 times L times H. And if we look at this, as the bar falls down, that H is getting smaller. And so my magnetic flux into the board is getting smaller. And so Lenz's law says that if the flux is changing, then there's a current that gets induced. If the flux through a loop is changing, then there's a current that's induced in the loop. And the magnetic field due to that induced current is going to try and cancel out any changes in the flux. And so since this flux into the board is getting smaller, Again, here it has nothing to do with the magnetic field changing, although a lot of problems 
That's what's happening is the area stays constant and the magnetic field changes. Here, the magnetic field is staying constant and the height is getting smaller. So I have a decreasing flux into the board. And so there needs to be a current that gets induced that creates a magnetic field that's into the board to try and build that magnetic flux back up to what it was. And so that would mean that I would need to have a current that's going clockwise around here, which means in that bar, it would be flowing to the right. And again, I get that by, if I look at the bar, if I point the thumb of my right hand in the direction of the current to the right, if I bend my fingers down through the center of the loop, my fingers are pointing into the page. And so that would mean that that clockwise current generates a magnetic field into the page to try and ban to try and cancel out the decrease in magnetic flux. Either of those are acceptable justifications. Uh, I'm not going to write them down. I, I explain them in words, but where it says justify your answer, that's what we'd be looking for. So again, the current in the bar was to the right, the justification you would either talk about it in terms of the force on the positive charged particles and looking at QV cross B, or you would explain it using Lenz's law. The flux into the board is getting smaller, so the current produces a magnetic field into the board. Part C says, calculate the magnitude of the current in the crossbar as it falls as a function of the crossbar's speed, V. And so for this, the current is going to be the induced voltage divided by the resistance, R. And so we need to calculate the voltage. So Faraday's law says that the induced EMF equals the rate of change of the magnetic flux. Again, if I'm not using absolute values, Faraday's law says that the voltage equals negative change in flux over change in time. That's because just like we were saying before with Lenz's law, the induced current tries to cancel out the change in flux. That induced current is produced by this induced voltage. So the induced voltage tries to cancel out the change in flux. And so this is the rate of change. We said that our magnetic flux was B0 times L times the height. Again, it's not the H0 that we had before, it's just the arbitrary height H. If we look at this, B0 and L are not changing. And then this is the change in height with respect to time. But that's the speed of the bar. The velocity of the bar is how quickly that height is changing. So this induced voltage is B0 L times V. And so if I plug that in, I get that the current is B0 L V divided by the resistance R. Part D. Derive but do not solve the differential equation that could be used to determine the speed of the crossbar as a function of time t. And so this sometimes causes problems because people don't understand what they mean by a differential equation. Again, a differential equation is an equation that has a function and derivatives of the function in it. And in these problems where you have something that's moving and there's a force and it's accelerating, the equation, the differential equation, is going to usually come from looking at Newton's second law. Newton's second law says that the net force equals the mass times the acceleration. So if we look at the bar, it has a downward force of m times g. Again, we're answering these things in terms of b0, l, m, h0, r, fundamental constants, so g would be a fundamental constant. And then we have this magnetic force that's upwards. I'm going to let down be my positive direction, 
So my net force is going to be mg minus the magnetic force. The magnetic force on a current carrying wire is ILB. It's IL cross B. Here, the current and the magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. So it's ILB sine theta, but here theta is 90 degrees. So it's just IL times B. But we need to use the fact that the current, we found the current in the other step. This magnetic force is B0 L V divided by R times L times B0. So we're going to have that the mass times the acceleration equals mg minus, again I have b0 times b0, so that's b0 squared, l times l, so that's l squared. So I have b0 squared l squared v divided by the resistance. And here we're close, but we're trying to determine the speed of the crossbar. We want a differential equation. So we can't leave our acceleration as A. We need to use the fact that acceleration is dv dt. And so if we substitute that in, we have that m times dv dt equals mg minus b0 squared L squared over R, that whole quantity, those are all just a bunch of constants, times V. So everything in there is just a number, B0, L, R, M, G, except for V. So we have our function V, that's V as a function of time, and then I have the derivative of it with respect to time. And so that is my differential equation. I don't need to write this as V of t, but that is so my differential equation that could be solved would be this. This is not a difficult one to solve if you're asked to solve it. It is just a first order separable differential equation. It's very similar to looking at things falling with air resistance. And in some other videos I have an object falling with air resistance and you would see a very similar equation to this except you would have an upward force that was some constant times V that was the drag force. Um, this constant is just, there's a lot more to it, but it's the exact same idea. Part E wants the terminal speed of the crossbar. And so as this speeds up, the current gets bigger and bigger and bigger. As the current gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the magnetic force gets bigger and bigger until we reach a point when the acceleration is zero. We reach a point when the force of gravity is going to equal the magnetic force. The downward force of gravity is going to equal the upward magnetic force. So the gravitational force was m times g. The magnetic force that we had was b0 squared l squared v over r. But this velocity, when these are equal, this is the terminal velocity that you're being asked for. And so you have to just solve that for the velocity. That terminal velocity would be mg times the resistance of the wire R divided by the magnetic field squared times the length squared. So then the velocity gets bigger and bigger and bigger until it reaches this terminal velocity. Again, as the velocity gets bigger, the acceleration gets smaller. And as the acceleration gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it stops speeding up. And we eventually reach this constant velocity that it continues down at. And the last part's a conceptual question. 
says, if the resistance of the crossbar is increased, does the terminal speed increase, decrease, or remain the same? And it says, give physical justification in terms of the forces on the crossbar. And so we can see from the equation, since the terminal velocity is proportional to R, if we increase the resistance, we're going to increase the terminal velocity. But we need to explain this a little bit more. We need to explain this in terms of the forces. So our induced EMF was B0 L V. So at a certain speed V, you get a certain voltage that's induced. The current was that voltage divided by the resistance. So a bigger resistance would mean a smaller current. Again, this is at the same speed. You have the same voltage that's induced, but you're going to have a smaller current. The magnetic force was ILB. So if the current is smaller, Again, L and B0 are still the same. A smaller current is going to mean a smaller force for the same speed. And so this means that it's going to need to reach a larger speed so that magnetic force will equal the force of gravity. Again, at the same velocity, that magnetic force is smaller. Again, at the same velocity, the voltage was the same, so the current is smaller, so the magnetic force is smaller. So if I want the magnetic force to equal the weight of the object, that means it's going to take a larger velocity to get the correct size current to equal the weight. And again, that's the justification. So a smaller current means a smaller magnetic force, so the velocity must be bigger to have the magnetic force equal to mg. Again, this is a very common basic idea with induced voltages, induced currents, to look at something that's falling, have a current that gets induced, and look at how that current is going to affect the force, and look at how the force is going to affect the velocity. Again, other variations of this, you might have something that's sliding down a ramp, um, but they're all the same type of idea. You look at the, in, the changing magnetic flux. You use that to find the induced voltage. You use the induced voltage and the resistance to find the induced current. Magnetic force depends on that current. And so it's just putting all of those things together. Again, these are very, very important questions when you're looking at magnetism and induced EMF in an introductory electricity and magnetism class.